Welcome to the Mid-Ohio Valley Public Forum video podcast. This podcast features issues of interest to the residents of the Mid-Ohio Valley area. With the coronavirus pandemic, civic life has changed greatly through our country. This is an election year, and one of the things that has changed is candidates for public office are not able to campaign the way they normally would. Generally, this time of year, they'd be out knocking on doors, going to all kinds of civic events, fairs, festivals, shaking hands, meeting and greeting the voters. They can't do that this year. So many of our initial podcasts will feature interviews with candidates for local and state offices. Uh, we featured most of the primary candidates, um, and then here in a few weeks, we'll get started on the general election. Uh, so if you're a candidate and you're interested in being interviewed, you can reach out to us either through our Facebook page, MOV Public Forum, or via email, movpublicforum at gmail.com. Today we'll be interviewing Sam Petsonk. Sam is a candidate for Attorney General of West Virginia. Welcome, Sam. We're glad you could join us this afternoon. Thank you for making the time. Thank you all for doing this. It, as you say, it's, it's important, especially right now. Well, with that, let's dive right in. Give us your best one minute introduction pitch speech. <laughs> well, sure, you know, I mean, it, it, unfortunately, that pitch doesn't start on a on a bright spot these days. You know, we're in the middle of a crisis in West Virginia, the biggest public health crisis of our lifetimes, uh, for sure. Uh, and and we've been in what I call a slow moving crisis for a long time when it comes to job loss. We've seen tens of thousands of. Uh, good paying jobs go out the window in West Virginia over the last 10, uh, uh, 20 years. And it's really, it's gone from bad to worse. And you know, in my law practice, I have been a, a labor lawyer. You know, I work for, I'm originally from Morgantown. I worked for Senator Byrd in Washington, D.C. Uh, for a number of years there uh, while he was still with us, handling labor and energy policy, trying to help to find the ways to drive uh, job growth and opportunity in, in, the, you know, in the industrial backbone of our economy in West Virginia. And I've gone on to do that in my law practice. And I have seen, and people have come to me uh, over, the, over the past couple of years, uh, we need that leadership from our attorney general. Uh, that's what I bring to this race. That's why it's so important, especially right now. I think you've kind of answered my next question a little bit already, which is what skills, experience, education, et cetera, do you have that you feel sets you apart from the other candidates? Well, certainly, you know, I, the Attorney General, I, I have to start in answering that question by reminding people, what is the job of the Attorney General? It's twofold. First of all, the Attorney General serves as the people's lawyer, representing consumers and workers and small businesses and uh, victims of discrimination in West Virginia. That's the primary uh, litigation function that the Attorney General holds. To, and that's what I've done in my law practice. You know, we've recovered uh, millions of dollars in judgments for uh, working people across West Virginia, litigating uh, layoff cases, and retirees' health care cases, black on benefits fits, health and safety grievances on the job, discrimination cases, reasonable accommodation issues. And so, you know, that's what I've, that's what I've done in my law practice. And, um, and, and, you know, the second part of the attorney general's job is to serve as counsel to the state. It, that means advising agencies on ensuring transparency, accountability, timely responses to public inquiries, uh, you know, and adherence to our constitutional uh, structure our constitutional uh, requirements uh, here in West Virginia. Uh, that in West Virginia, we have a, a special constitutional mandate to provide a thorough and efficient education. It's a fundamental right under the West Virginia Constitution, not present under the federal constitution. And so, you know, the attorney general has to advise the agencies of the state to ensure that we honor our commitments to our people. And I've litigated those types of cases. I've litigated uh, constitutional education cases in my practice. I've litigated uh, Freedom of Information Act claims, open meetings claims, ensuring that, that you know, when our public agencies are meeting to make decisions, that they're transparent, they publish their agendas, they make the meetings available. And, you know, those are, uh, it's been a big part of my practice. You, and uh, those jobs are uh, central. The, those tasks are at the heart of the Attorney General's office. 
Well, I think you've touched on this as well, but we'll give you the time to elaborate if you'd like. What's the main motivation that made you decide to step up now and run for office? Well, you know, certainly seeing the, the magnitude of the loss that we are dealing with in West Virginia, uh, wages just down the tubes, a lifetime's worth of labor in the coal mines. A lot of people have, uh, you know, devoted that kind of work only to find out that the black lung benefits or the uh, health care that they thought that they had worked to earn out the window. And, you know, it's really the attorney general's job uh, to be there to uh, enforce our most basic uh, wage protections, our wage bond law, our wage payment and collection act. Uh, you know, we haven't seen the kind of innovation and leadership from our attorney general that we need on those topics. Uh, and I've been in bankruptcy court when uh, coal companies and other uh, large industrials have filed bankruptcy, chapter 11 bankruptcy in West Virginia. We've been there, we've intervened on behalf of uh, workers as creditors in those cases. And uh, you know, the state is losing uh, many cases, millions of dollars uh, through these bankruptcies. We need to be there fighting to protect the public fisc and to protect working people in those bankruptcies. Uh, so, you know, all, and I should say, uh, one of the most important losses that we have dealt with is the loss of uh, health insurance through the private market. When we lose these industrial plans, we lose a lot of health care coverage in West Virginia. And that most people know our attorney general has been out there attacking the federal health care protections that are in place for us now. And uh, that may be uh, one of the most important issues that has drawn me to this race at this time. People came to me and they said, we can't afford to lose this health insurance in West Virginia. Uh, you got to get in there and try to stop him from doing this to us, from taking away that health insurance. Well, Sam, I'd like to ask you about something that is kind of baffling me right now. Two months ago, we had the first corona cases in the state, and we've had so far as of yesterday, 68 people have died. And that's a real tragedy. We have done everything to try and prevent that. People are isolating, businesses have shut down, um, schools are shut down. And so far we've kept it to 68 deaths. But over the past several years, We've had another crisis going on that has been claiming an average of 75 lives a month, um, which is, you know, so much greater a death toll. And I'm speaking of the opioid crisis. Our current attorney general uh, used to be a lobbyist for the pharmaceutical companies that are kind of implicated in being the cause of the opioid crisis. And he's gone after some of the companies that he used to lobby um, and gotten some pretty small settlements, um, relatively speaking. So I'd like to know if you're elected, is there anything you can do about going after some real compensation for the victims so that we have the money to set up what we need to deal with this ongoing opioid crisis? Absolutely. And, you know, I don't, I, uh, this is a topic in every conversation that I have about the attorney general's race, but you know what, I seldom have to be, bring it up because anyone I speak to about this office understands the gravity of the, of the challenge you know, voice here. And it's, it's one of, it, you know, it's one of the central concerns for me in, 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 in this office. And, and it touches virtually every household now in West Virginia. And what do we know? the overdose rate has doubled in West Virginia during the time that Patrick Morrissey has been in this office. So whatever he's done, it has not begun to uh, suffice. I'll tell you three primary points of emphasis in answering your question. First, we need to continue litigating against the responsible companies. And I am in touch with attorneys general uh, around the country, you know, uh, who are doing that, who are coordinating to, across state lines to ensure real leverage for significant uh, outcomes in these cases. And when you, I say significant, remember, we lose $8 billion each year to substance uh, 
abuse, uh, substance use disorder and the addiction crisis in West Virginia. That's eight billion with a B. Mm. So, you know, $15 million judgment here or there or, or a settlement, just it's, it, it's orders of magnitude off the mark. And we need to push for those billion dollar remedies. Now, look, I can't sit here and promise you that I'm going to bring in a billion dollars here and a billion dollars there. But I can tell you that smart coordination, documentation of our losses, our damages will help us to establish our equitable claims for, the, for uh, recovering on the losses, that the billion dollar losses that our state has suffered. So uh, we have to push litigation and a part and parcel to effective litigation is effective uh, data and effective documentation. So we, you know, we, we have to do better on that front, pushing for uh, outcomes in litigation. That's the first point of emphasis. And uh, there's an important data component that, that, uh, that relates to that effort. I think we've fallen short on uh, tracking the, the metrics that will enable us to argue more forcefully for uh, better recoveries in court. So uh, I handle uh, class action litigation among law practice, and I understand the kind of uh, coordinated advocacy that we need to bring on that front. That's point number one. Point number two, uh, the federal Medicaid dollars are some of the most significant uh, support that we have for addiction treatment in West Virginia. And when, and when Morrissey is out there attacking Medicaid expansion, we have to remind our healthcare community and our public, our, our, our neighbors here, that he is attacking the backbone the financial backbone of the addiction treatment delivery system in West Virginia. So the, the prior question about health care and health insurance really also affects and implicates the opioid crisis and the addiction crisis because if Morrissey succeeds in attacking those federal health care dollars, he's cut us off at the ankles in our fight against the addiction crisis. Uh, most every uh, treatment provider that's out there in West Virginia helping us to make our way through this crisis uh, has benefited from the Medicaid program. It's a backbone uh, payload for the, the clinics and the treatment facilities. You know, yeah. So, so that's the second point. Stop the attack on the federal uh, uh, treatment dollars that are helping us. Better efforts on litigation. Number two, protect the federal health care dollars that support addiction treatment and recovery. And then point number three uh, is really near and dear to me here, which is something I've written about and, and tried to educate the, uh, my fellow lawyers around West Virginia through teaching classes on the topic, you know, in recent years. Uh, and this is, this is my third point of emphasis. Substance use disorder is a disease. It requires medical uh, support and accommodation, uh, just like any other disease, diabetes or epilepsy or COPD. You know, uh, West Virginia has a human rights law that ensures that we provide support to people with these kinds of uh, diseases in our state. And it's the attorney general's job to enforce that Human Rights Act, to enforce the support for people with uh, diseases just like substance use disorder. So what does it mean for the attorney general's work? It means that we need to see our attorney general advocating to get to help people with substance substance use disorder. If they've gotten clean, if they're sober, they deserve support getting back in the workforce and back with their families. You know, we know that uh, the, all the studies in the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration uh, at the federal level has told us over and over again, the two biggest barriers to success with long-term recovery are stigma and unaffordability of treatment. So if we treat substance use disorder like the disease that it is, and we ensure support for people getting back into the workforce and back with their families, the evidence indicates that we will start to see better outcomes and, and, and God willing, a reduction in the overdose rate. So that's the third point of emphasis. Uh, use our human rights laws through the Attorney General's office to support, really meaningfully support people in, in long-term recovery. Well, that's a great and very detailed answer, and I appreciate uh, all three of those points. Uh, our next question is, there are, there are so many things happening in the West Virginia Attorney General's office um, that we, I'd love to get your views on, um, but we don't have all day. We have half an hour. And so from the suits against the EPA, uh, the amicus brief on behalf of the oil and gas and pipeline companies and so on. Uh, 
if you're elected, tell us the one thing that you want to prioritize to accomplish during your term. Well, I mean, I have to reiterate, day one, job one, is to remove West Virginia's support for this lawsuit that would eliminate health care for hundreds of thousands of West Virginians. That's, you know, uh, that's got to be the top priority. It was a deeply flawed decision that, that, uh, that Morrissey has made. Uh, but if I could say that, you know, the flip side of that is the one new uh, effort that I would make and that I would bring, you know, I think everyone, virtually a majority of West Virginians understand and agree about the need to end that lawsuit. But I would also uh, create a real uh, a workers advocacy function within the Attorney General's office to address the issues that I mentioned before loss of wages and retirement through bankruptcies. We need to get sharp. I was just sitting this morning with a couple of workers up in Nicholas County who have lost wages that were due to them under our wage and hour laws and uh, the attorney general and the state agencies that have responsibility for enforcing those laws have never set foot on these work sites, have not been enforcing our wage and hour laws. And you know, if, if people don't receive the wages that they work for to earn, you know what? We're in bad shape in this state. So that's, got, that's going to be a top priority for me. Uh, you know, and it will be something new that I bring to that office. So what are the top three things that you would like to focus on if you're elected to be the next Attorney General of West Virginia? Well, you know, healthcare goes beyond simply getting, you know, get, removing West Virginia from the, from the, uh, the lawsuit to eliminate the federal health care program. So we, we have to advocate for uh, for patients across the board. And um, so I'm going to say number one is consumer protection. That includes advocating for people who suffer from unfair medical debt collection, also student loan debt collection. You know, there's a broad array of uh, of harms that patients and working families face. Uh, in the healthcare industry, but it really goes beyond that industry because we, we see uh, consumers vulnerable to unreasonable uh, commercial practices across the board. So um, it's a healthcare concern, but I say really broadly, consumer protection has always been the backbone of the attorney general's uh, you know, serve public service. And that, that's a focus for me. Um, Consumer protection, uh, workers' rights, as I mentioned, we're going to take the state in a, in a better direction and really establish an investigatory, uh, investigative uh, function um, for uh, workers' complaints and ensure that those complaints are, uh, are addressed and, um, and resolved. Consumer protection, workers', workers rights, work, uh, workforce protection, and then, uh, and then third, um, I guess the third major area of focus would be uh, through this Attorney General's Civil Rights Division. That's that's where you enforce those protections for people with substance use disorder. Uh, so, pr consumer protection, workers' rights, and uh, the uh, civil rights and uh, you know, uh, opioid addiction. It, uh, it, of course, it goes beyond opioids. This is really uh, substance use disorder. Uh, is an important area of focus and of course there's much more this is that i call the attorney general's office the legal nerve center of state government it suffuses everything that we do as as uh, as a state and uh, but those are those are probably among the top three points of emphasis mm -hmm. well we've touched on this as well um the current attorney general has joined the lawsuit as you mentioned along with the attorney generals from 17 other states um, and the Federal Department of Justice to destroy the Affordable Care Act. Uh, if the ACA is dismantled, that would mean approximately 184,000 West Virginians would lose their health care coverage. Uh, in addition, as you said, West Virginia would lose billions in federal funding and uh, estimates are 16,000 plus people would lose their jobs. Um, the Supreme Court has agreed to take up the case. Um, you know, I, you, you've stated your position on this. Uh, what, how do you see that going forward? If you're elected, what would be the steps to, you know, to get West Virginia out of that mess? <laughs> well, we would remove, we would certainly remove our support for that lawsuit. Uh, you know, I would, I would, you know, I, unfortunately, you know, you need to consult with the governor on these matters as the attorney general, but I, 
Uh, not that Patrick Morrissey seems to have gone out of his way to do that very often, uh, but I think the right thing to do is to uh, to uh, make a concerted effort to remove West Virginia from supporting that. But, but what I would want to do is actually to take uh, a, a you know, the contrary position and to, uh, to advocate for the protection of those programs. Um, let's, you know, in answer to that question, I want to talk about the partnerships um, that relate to this, to these federal programs. Uh, that the law you're talking about doesn't only support uh, clinic, clinics and hospitals. I mean, it, it supports school-based health centers. It supports the, uh, the, the federally qualified health clinics in some of our most rural areas that are the only providers uh, for, for miles and miles in many cases. Uh, you know, the, the, while you cite this figure of 184,000, which is, is basically a valid figure there, but, but when, when the federal law goes away, you could also see the loss of protections for people with pre-existing conditions. Uh, you would see the loss of the limits placed by the federal law on out-of-pocket in annual uh, expenditures. So you may have health insurance if we lose this federal law, but you notwithstanding, I pay Sam pays his premium uh, all year long. I may have to spend untold sums of money to purchase health care, although I already have health insurance if we remove the caps, you know, that are now in place on the, uh, the amount that, uh, that an insured individual can be required to spend on an annual basis. So <clears throat> we lose, we lose support for our health clinics, and we also lose a really important consumer protections uh, if this law goes away. I say that because the attorney general, uh, you know, must advocate for people who are in those positions. Uh, th th if we lose the federal law, really the consumer function in the attorney general's office becomes all the more urgent. Uh, but let's not lose it. Let's fight to, to maintain it. And I should also mention that you know, we have thousands of coal miners with black lung benefits. Uh, because of that federal law that uh, Morrissey is trying to repeal. Part of the provisions of that law uh, really um, secured uh, uh, black lung benefits, that's healthcare benefits for, for sick coal miners. Um, and those folks could stand to lose those benefits too. It'd be a disaster for some of the most vulnerable families you know, in our state. Yes, Sam, we have learned a lot about you and what you'd like to do if you're elected Tell us what you think is your wow factor. In other words, what do you think that voters might hear about you that would make them say, wow, I am going to vote for that guy? Well, I, th I, I hope that they, they might have heard something through, through our discussion here this, this past half hour. But I would say this, you know, the job of the attorney general is to serve as a people's lawyer. You know. I'm a ninth generation West Virginian. I've, I've spent my life working for Senator Byrd, serving as a people's lawyer here in West Virginia. You know, uh, we need somebody in this office that cares about our people, that knows how to advocate, you know, for us. And, uh, and I think that my record, my identity as, you know, as an advocate for people here in our state uh, should be the quality that uh, everyone ought to embrace and, you know, and, and expect from an attorney general. So with that, we'll move into the, let's get to know Sam the person uh, instead of the candidate. What's your favorite, single most favorite place or thing in our state? Single most favorite, you know, I mean, I, I spend a lot of time all over this state. Um, Well, <laughs> you want a thing or a place that disqualifies my wife and babies, mm -hmm. and that disqualifies. Uh, uh, okay, so um, <laughs> you know, I would, I would possibly say, um, uh, I'd say some place that's gone right now. You know, there used to be a little spot uh, out uh, the in Milton called the Opry. I don't know if you remember, there was a little Opry house out there. Uh, that was a great spot. And, you know, and it's, and I, I mean, I've always been, I was raised up around music and uh, any place that people get together and play music in West Virginia, um, take the Vandalia. You ever been to the Vandalia gathering? 
at the, at the Capitol in Charleston, a wonderful thing. So maybe that would be, if I could say that, that's a thing, that's a, that's a festival. And the Van Dave gathering, you know, that, that nails it for me. I mean, just it's just a delightful. You got blackberry cobbler. You got banjo picking all day long. You got people dancing out there on the Capitol grounds and artwork from all over the state. And kids coming in with contests and, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff I love to do. So I, I maybe I'll say the Vandalia gathering. So Sam, what are your own personal core values? <clears throat> Well, you know, uh, I, I would say that uh, when you talk about values, I value, uh, I value integrity, you know, honesty, uh, and work ethic, you know, um, and uh, so I, I I mean, I obviously value my f family and, uh, you know, and, and, and faith and those sorts of things. I don't know if those classify as values. So I'd say integrity uh, and work ethic, you know, that to me, that's what makes the world go round. Uh, Martin Buber said that responsibility is the navel string of creation. And, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, I really believe that I believe in those things. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, we're good. <laughs> I got a. What uh, would you say that you? Uh, I had a hiccup in my internet for a section. There. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say that you, as an individual, uh, are most passionate about? I mean, to me, that's easy. It's got to be my my two little boys and my wife. You know that. Uh, I've got a I've got a two and a half year old, almost three year old boy, and uh, and a five month old baby, and um, you know that's the most special thing that there is, and um, you know that's uh, that's other than that, you know, health and uh, and and music. I'm I'm I try to stay healthy. I really enjoy swimming. I'm all, I haven't been able to swim for several months now, so because of the coronavirus, uh, you no. Know, uh, I might go out to Somersville Lake here soon and try to get a little bit of exercise. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm most, you know, most passionate about those kids. So what do you enjoy doing in your off time? Not that you probably have a lot of that right now, but when you do, what do you like to do? Um, I, uh, you know, I, certainly I, I try to I, always to swim several times a week and, uh, and I'm a banjo picker, you know, I, I, when, it, when I have truly free time, I get out and play music with friends and I really enjoy that uh, uh, an immense amount. Uh, but like say, it's, uh, of course, we can't really get together right now anyway. Uh, well, that's And I do a lot of, I also get have. out, you know, I get out and it, um, yeah, well, it makes me unique. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm a banjo picking lawyer in Beckley. That's about, I think I might be one of the only ones uh, uh, going as far as that. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, um, I, I don't think of myself as very specially unique. I'm just uh, out here trying to do right by people and I've been blessed to have a loving mother and, and father in my life and uh, and um, that makes me feel unique. So I have a quick well, question with that in here that wasn't on the list. <laughs> Did you and Senator Byrd ever play together? Well, Yes, uh, he couldn't, he was, by the time I got to know him, he was really, he was, he was not able to fiddle like he used to. He just couldn't, but he still did sing, and he sang a bunch. We got to go to Nashville together once when he was honored by the, uh, by the Grandmaster Fiddlers uh, with the Lifetime Achievement Award, and buddy, that was probably the highlight of my, of my years working for Senator Bird, getting to spend uh, that time down in Nashville. We had, uh, we went shopping and got into the Opry and did all kinds of stuff. And we played music and sang together. He, he sang up until his dying day. He always loved to sing Amazing Grace and Cripple Creek and some of those old tunes, you know, that, that he used to fiddle. And um, so, 
Yeah, we did. And I was really lucky to get to do that with him. I bet you have great stories. Uh, he was definitely a state treasure. Um, with that, we've come to the end. We'd like to give you a few minutes to tell us and the voters anything you feel like we've missed or that you wanna make sure you hit again, including how to get more information on your campaign, how to get involved, donate, get in touch with you, et cetera. Well, I thank you for that. I mean, uh, we have been the far and away the leading fundraiser uh, in this race, and that comes from, uh, you know, mom and pop sending five, 10, 15, 20 dollars when you can, you know. Uh, you can do that on our website, samforwv.com. And that's, I think, how we really bring back some accountability in our politics is uh, find these ways to chip in uh, household by household and, and fund these political races. Um, as a people collectively. So I would appreciate if people can do that, whether it's a monthly thing or just a one-time donation, you can do it all on our website. And uh, you can, uh, you can uh, read more about me on Facebook too. Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, we're on all of those platforms and we post stories and pictures and videos up there so you can stay up to date. And here's what I'd love to leave people with, stay up to date about this race. This is an historic election. Uh, typically, we have about 120, 130,000 voters uh, participate in a primary election in a presidential year in West Virginia. We've already had over 220,000 people request absentee ballots. We haven't even had our election yet, and we've got more people voting in this primary than ever, than I think forever have voted, at least in recent memory. And so we're, we, this is an historic election, and it's the people of West Virginia are really reclaiming the franchise. And I want everybody who watches this to be a part of that effort. And let's encourage our friends to vote and to keep voting. That's how things get better, is when politicians are really accountable and our public uh, participates in these elections. This, That's so, so uh, you know, I, I hope you'll Sam? follow my race. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's really true, Sam. And I want to thank you for making the time to come on and talk with us this afternoon and let the voters know what you're about. Uh, we really appreciate that. Everyone, remember, wash your hands. <laughs> and thank you, Sam. Thank you all. Thank you, Jen and Kim.